Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, it's me. I'm here again outside in the outdoors. But what's not about the outdoors is today is the video which is about the new MT Compile 1.15 update. I'm going to be doing what's called winging it where I just go out and I'm just going to talk about a bunch of stuff really quickly uh, and there's going to be like video on top of this. So so the, the main focus of this update was a bunch of internal stuff so there's not a lot of user facing features but there is some pretty cool stuff that I'm going to go over. So the first major change that you're going to see is that now functions no longer output if they're unused. Meaning that if you write a function or you include a library or something like that you're not they're not going to be included in the output unless you explicitly use them in any of the branches that can be accessed that means that a, fun a function call it's kind of like a tree where the, the, the first function call might uh you know branch off and call some other functions and those functions will call functions and that will kind of decide the tree of what gets outputted but never fear if you still want to output a function uh that can be used by like users and gamers something like that the new export attribute and that and what that will do is it will basically well, it'll export the function. Another thing I added is autocomplete for macros in the web editor. So if you have macros defined, now the web editor, when you press enter on them, uh, they'll automatically get sent in. They'll have templating and all that cool stuff. The feature that I added is another binding called sleeping. So that's really cool. Uh, I recently discovered you can actually use this on players. It's not just for boxes. So uh, yeah, you can now use that and uh, detect when players are sleeping directly in the thing. So with all with all of the new types reworks that we had that I did uh, internally, now now uh, I've made the return command a little bit more reasonable with how, how how it handles return values. So if you return a value that the function is not built to return, it'll actually try to convert the value to it so that you can return it rather than just throwing an error and going crazy. And and a little reminder that the first the first instance of a return statement in your function is what determines what the function returned. So so that's just a good rule of thumb. Likewise, another thing that another thing that's added as a benefit of the new conversion stuff is that we can now is that if you use the swap operator on two different uh, on two different scoreboard values, it actually it doesn't just throw an error now. It just it actually converts the two types. So it'll kind of uh, send them to a temp variable, then do the conversion, and then it, send, it sends them back, but swapped. But when it's all built in, uses all the same systems that uh, the rest of the language does. So super duper cool there. Another quality of life feature that was added was uh, that, that the left-hand side of an expression is now the kind of authoritative one when, when it comes to conversion. So so this is only really relevant for decimals right now, but but for example, if you were to add two decimal numbers or fix fixed point decimal numbers together, now it will actually, it'll convert the right-hand one to the left hand one so you're not getting you're not it's not unexpectedly changing the precision of the of the numbers it's just it just is always the left hand side and then another super exciting feature that i added that i've that i've wanted for a long time and it was super easy to make uh it's uh it's the uh, the new auto attribute which you can now give to give to functions and what this will do is it'll add it to tick.json and if you specify like uh using parentheses it's because it's, it's a you call it like a function if you specify parentheses and give it an interval, it'll actually run on that interval. So, you know, you do like auto one second and then the function will just run every single second without having to touch tick.json or write any timers or anything like that. So that's super cool. Oh shoot, what am I doing here? Oh. All right, now onto some of the changes. These are not necessarily additions, but they're things that are changed about the language that you want. You probably want to know. So we're going to start by addressing the Minecraft changes that came out uh, a little while ago, but you know how I'm, I'm a little bit tardy to these updates. So variable names no longer hash themselves if they're longer than 16 characters. That limit has been raised up to 256. So you can make variable names that are longer than 256, so they'll just get hashed internally. Uh, before, back when the limit was 16, this was uh, this was pretty cool, but it's not cool anymore because Microsoft changed it and they raised the limit, which is which is cool, I guess. That's pretty cool. Get out of this brushy area. Addressing some issues, the uh, just fundamental issues that I really couldn't fix using code. Uh, function function parameters and function return types are now global by default, meaning that they mean that they're they're set to global and uh, they're not attached to any specific entity. Minecraft runs with the assumption that there's always only going to be one executing context at a time, so it doesn't really matter how this works. Uh, unless it's going to be reusing values, which it doesn't. So I thought it was a safe bet just to go ahead and make them global, and then that means that you can use things like function return types in tick.json values, like with the, the new auto attribute. Stuff like that, there was no entity to attach the, the return value to, so, you know, well, you were kind of out of luck there. It was just a it, it was just a hard-to-resolve bug. All right, so we out here right now uh, with Mr. Thanksgiving while we do this next point. What's up, bro? The rest of the stuff and changes are not going to be changing a whole lot. Uh, it's already stuff that I've pretty much gone over, but we're going to go ahead and move on to bug fixes. This is going to be rapid fire. We're just going to go through this real quick. So thanks, Mr. Thanksgiving. I lowered the value on the server software so that it updates faster in the in the web editor. So that should be a lot. It just feels more responsive. And there was no reason to have a limit there in the first place. So areas where you use the nice dot formatting with the, with the functions uh, no longer have bug in the names of when you call them. And just compiler functions just clean up a whole lot in, uh, in there if the output isn't as janky. Fix just various things, grammatical issues, just uh, little like chokes with the compiler, things like that. But the big thing is now that 
is now I rewrote some of my, my uh, WebSocket implementation so it actually works with big files, and it no longer crashes if you have a file that's like 3,000 lines long. So, uh, minuscule change. I don't think it's gonna affect like any of you, but I mean, it's there. I had to anyway, so might as well. About covers it for this update, to be honest with you. Uh, Mr. Thanksgiving thinks this is pretty lame as well, but you know what? I got a lot of a. Uh... Wow, he's just. He's just going. He's just going for it, Mr. Thanksgiving. But I got some really exciting stuff planned for 1.16. And uh, since a majority of the time I spent on this update was rewriting the entire type system so that I could do stuff like this, uh, you can expect to see stuff with user-generated types. There's going to be like more scheduling stuff, uh, control flow. I'm ho hoping to do like early return and stuff like that coming up soon. Uh, I don't want to spoil every, every, everything though. Uh, that I got planned because I got stuff planned and it's coming. So thanks, thanks for watching everyone and uh, all the stuff that are in, is in the description. If you like the video, leave a like and uh, thank you guys for watching.